Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Varsity Week 5 Valorant Match of the Week stream featuring 4-0 Grafton taking on 2-1 Port Washington as of now. I am your fellow City Commentator Andrew Sish Jr. Pleased to be joining you through today's matchup, commentating it for you. So without further ado, let's get into notes for today's action. Turn down the game volume a little bit so you can hear me more clear. Spring 2023 Valorant Season Varsity Week 5 Grafton Blackhawks versus the Port Washington Pirates. So to start, let's look at the Grafton Blackhawks Division 2. Players consist of Charlie Char, their captain, Matthew Hotshot, Lucas Kibb, Lucas Yasagi, and Todd Tombstone. Spring 2023 stats for Grafton, completely perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Grafton has one of the best records in Division 2, 4-0 overall, 52-0 round differential. That is the eye-popping statistic for them. They have defeated Pius at 11, 13-0 in Week 1, defeated New London 13-0 in Week 2, defeated Wilmot 13-0 in Week 3, and they defeated Wisconsin Lutheran 13-0 in Week 4. So... Port Washington, on the other hand, Division 2. Players consist of Matthew M. Cannon, their captain, Connor Keneal, Henry Monkey Tails, Max Clear, and Ryder Simp. Spring 2023 stats for Port Washington 2 and 1 overall, 37 and 15 round difference. It should say round differential, forgot to change that. Uh, instead of round wins record. My apologies. Uh, they defeated Jefferson 13 to 0 in week 1. Defeated Two Rivers 13-2 in Week 2, and they lost to Fox Valley Lutheran 11-13 in Week 3. The FOS, again, stands for Featured on Stream. And Port Washington is currently playing their match, their Week 4 match against Reedsburg. They're making it up right now. I will look to... Uh, actually, let me look right now and see. Let me see if that match has gone final before I go any further here. Uh, Division 2, let's see. Looks like that match is still in progress. Reedsburg and Port Washington, that is. So, get some clarification on who wins that match shortly. But yeah, this match should be good. Grafton is making their debut on stream. This is my very first time casting their team at any capacity for a Wasea stream. Whether that be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Rocket League, or Valorant. So, very excited. And I think you guys will be very excited for the JV Week 5 announcement coming at the end of this stream because we'll have two new schools making their first appearance on stream since I've joined the Wissia regime. But yeah, this one should be a fun matchup. Alright. As you can hear in the background, Park High School is here playing in their Varsity Week 5 match. Uh, give me a moment, I will provide some filler content, I'm just making sure the lobby is ready for today's matchup. So it looks like the lobby is ready. Had some issues with my other account. So I am currently using the NYPB account. Let me 
up the uh, lobby music here. And week five, we should be on Fracture. Alright, so we will be awaiting the arrival of both Grafton and Port Washington. As the matchup will begin at 4.15 as Port Washington may still be in their uh, Week 4 remake match against Reesburg. If you did not watch the stream yesterday, you missed out on a Winter 2023 Rocket League Gauntlet Classic between WCA and Shauna. Despite technical difficulties, the series was rather good. WCA won four to one, but that score really doesn't tell the tale. As game games one and two set the tone for that entire series. WCA took the first game, and then Shano gutted it out in the second game. WCA took the third game, the fourth game, and the fifth game to go on to the final gauntlet match, which will be against Waukesha South, and that will happen this Monday, May first. So. Mark your calendars for that day as that is the grand finale of the Winter 2023 Rocket League season. And it could very well be my last Rocket League series that I cast for a see a full time at least. So you don't want to miss out on that. So we'll see if Grafton can keep their perfect record alive. It would be, it'd be very, very good to see that happen. But poor Washington, they've shown that they're tough. They were only two games out from beating Fox Valley the last time they were featured on stream, which was week three. As you can hear, Park is going bananas right now. In other news, Aaron Rodgers finally got traded from the Green Bay Packers over to the New York Jets. Contained a pick swap. The Jets getting Aaron Rodgers, the 15th overall draft pick, and a fifth round pick. And then the Packers got the 15th, or no, the 13th, sorry. 13th overall pick. I believe they got a sixth round pick. And then, or actually, I think they got a second round or two, a sixth round pick, and then a conditional. No, the second is conditional. Turning into a first of Rodgers play is 65% of the place for the Jets. So the draft got a little bit more interesting. It's only two days away. Very curious to see who Seattle is going to draft because I'm a big Seattle Seahawks guy. I have been for a long time. And uh, I don't know if we're going to go quarterback or if we're going to go defensive lineman, linebacker. I mean, I wouldn't mind a guy like Jalen Carter, but... His off the field issues is what bugs me about him. Maybe get a quarterback like Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, sit behind Geno for a year or two. That could also work. All right. We see that Grafton is going to start on defense. At least for right now, Hotshot Tombstone and Yosagi have joined. Hello, uh... 
make sure all the game chats are muted here. There we go. Almost forgot to do that. Alright, since M Cannon has joined, I'm pretty sure that match has ended. Oh, it's still staying in progress on the uh, Leak Spot website. Trying to get a quick statistic out to you guys. Because it sounds like Park is doing very well. Which is good to hear. Because they'll probably be done before this match is even over. Looks like Char and Kib are in. So all of Grafton is here. And they're ready to prove to the stream, to everybody watching, why they are a dominant force to be reckoned with. This is their time to shine. like Kaneo, Glitch, Blizzard, Monkey Tails have joined as well. Just waiting on Port Washington's coach and their last member. This will be my 52nd ever regular season game for Wissia. As I celebrated my 50th last week casting Park versus Waukesha West, which is a great match. Park won 13 to four in case you didn't watch it. And that made Park go four and oh, they have a good shot of going five and oh today. Still waiting on Port Washington's coach. I wonder if Grafton is rethinking their choice and going to the attacking side. Not sure what's going on here. And it does look like Grafton is going to start out on attack instead of defending.
All right, now we're just waiting on Yusagi to go on Grafton's side for attacking. I'll make sure all the players are ready. This is always a slow and steady process, trying to make sure everybody's good before the match starts. It's always a, a tedious thing. I want to make sure all the players are ready before I go ahead and hit start. Alright, so I have a statistical update here. Port Washington did win their game against Reedsburg. They won 13-10. to So that would make their record, what, 50-27? And they'd be 3-1. All right, it looks like almost everybody's ready. All right, game is going to start this week. We are on Fracture. So it looks like Port Washington will be defending on the uh, left. So let me flip that for the overlay. Ooh, not that. Ooh. All right, there we go. Wrong button there. All right. Defenders will be Port Washington. Attackers will be Grafton. Still working out the case with Valor and I apologize for any inconveniences. All right, so we got a Reyna, a Cypher, a Sage on the side of Port Washington, as well as an Astra and a Chamber. We have a Rays, a Breach, Chamber, Brimstone, and Jet on the side of Grafton. Be a lot of explosives and a couple snipers on the field. Some invisibility tricks will be happening as well. As well as some detections from that cipher that Glitch Blizzard is playing. Alright, and round one is set to commence within 20 seconds. Grafton looking to stay undefeated. Here. 
All right, round one set to begin. Hotshot gets one of them. Char is gonna lock eyes with one. He's gonna get Keneal. Hotshot's gonna get one more. Can't get three monkey tails. Spike planted. Got the monkey tails and glitch blizzard. Last player Spike's standing. gonna be planted. Yasagi gets one, gets two. Grafton, a nice opening round to start things out. On my way. Okay, there we go. All right, so good start there for Grafton. Taking apart Port Here. Washington there. Got it down to a 4v2 before the spike was planted. Great stuff from Grafton and a good, strong opening. See if they can keep this going. Charter is going to have the spike. Player's going to get one. Yasagi's going to get him down. You know, pardoning the vision, but Kib is going to find Keneal. Headshot's going to get one of his own. Char is going to be planting the spike. Which gets one. Yasagi is going to find him, though. Holding down the angle, Yasagi gets the kill. Down to M Cannon. He's going to find Yasagi. Narrows it down to a 1v2. Doesn't know that Char is going to be on his left, though. M Cannon just going to sit and wait here. He's going to have to move now. He gets concussed. Char might be looking to push here. Char seems end cannon. Pulling them in. Clear it out. And time is gonna most likely expire. Oh, it's not gonna expire as Char gets that flaming KO. And that's how Grafton wins round two. Good ability play we're seeing from Grafton so far. Able to utilize their agents well, and that's how they've been able to get a two round advantage within the first two. Safety's off. Grafton still has not lost a single round. Hopefully, I don't jinx that. I probably did. Fully smoked. Camille is sitting in the corner with a shotgun now. Let's see if he's able to pick off one. Kip's gonna walk right in front of him. Kip does see Camille. Yasagi on the flank. Monkey Tails gets two. On the half HP, he's gonna be healing though. Yasagi is gonna get another. Yasagi has been really good so far for this Grafton team. Potential candidate for MVP. Kib is going to be planting. Kib's going to be watching the flank. Yasagi gets four. Can he get an ace? Let's see, he does. He gets an ace. Yasagi from Grafton gets the ace. Wow, no wonder why these. Wow, now I understand fully why Grafton is so good. Amazing. There's our reason why this team has not lost a single round, and that proves why. Help. Here. Here. Zagi getting one. Doesn't get the second though. Glitch gets that kill. He gets two. Which Blizzard can't get three. Spike planted. The 3v3, the spike is gonna be planted though. Tombstone with Chamber Sniper. He's gonna look to find at least one. Gets one. 3v2 in favor of Grafton. Tombstone still holding down a line of sight. Clearing Keneal the last breath. Oh, Tombstone barely misses that shot. It's blinded. 
one enemy remaining. <sighs> and Yo's gonna get one. I am expiring Tombstone with the snipe. Tombstone closing out that round. As Grafton up for... They need nine more rounds to stay completely perfect in the season. At this rate, I think they can do it. But do not count out Port Washington, as they are a very tenacious team. They find ways to stick into these games. Oh my goodness. What a snipe. From Tombstone. Just a well-oiled machine here, see here. Monkey Tails gets one, Yasagi gonna shut him down immediately. Yasagi gonna find Glitch Blizzard on the roam, he is gonna get him! One enemy remaining. One left, that's clear, Yasagi, 3k just running all over the place. Wow. Just dominating the point of attack is Yasagi, he knows the assignment well. He is doing it all for his team. This guy so far in my eyes is like the Volt Destroyer of Valor, and I swear, this Yasagi is just destroying. Absolute tank, trying to find another one. It's the smoke out, trying to disorient the opposition. Plant the Might spike. work through his perfection. Ooh. Isagi shoots M cannon spike through the smoke. Down. I got the spike. Isagi has the spike. No charges left. Which Blizzard, 4v2 in favor of Fort Washington. Can they take down Isagi though? That Which Blizzard does. Standing. And the last player standing gonna be Tombstone. He's gonna be taken down by Glitch Blizzard. We get to 3k. Port Washington wins their first round of the matchup. They cut their round deficit to four. And this is where Port Washington starts to get comfortable here. Once they start winning rounds, they get better as the game goes on. So Grafton's gonna have to take note of that. And if they do take note of that, they might win this game. But they have to stay consistent at the point of attack here because they can't let up against Port Washington. To do exactly what Fox Valley did. Keneal. Did he try to shut down? Hot shot? Not able to get him. The assist from Tombstone. Off your feet! Just like that, it's a 5v4 in favor of Grafton. Tombstone's gonna get one. Yasagi gonna get one as well. Kid's gonna be planting. Yasagi gonna find Wisp Blizzard. Not gonna get M Cannon. And Tombstone gonna finish it off for Grafton just like that. Quick fashion. Grafton just running this map. They regain their five round deficit. Or advantage, excuse me. One second, peeps. I gotta visit the Astral to play some stars. Round eight is gonna be set in about 10 seconds from now. And yeah, so far within. The first third of this game, it's been all Grafton so far, with the exception of the round that Port Washington won. They are so dead. Let's see if Tombstone can find Keneal here. Oh, just barely misses the shot. Keneal almost took the bait there. Usagi's gonna find clear. Uh, Keneal's gonna find hot shot. Oh, another nice snipe from Tombstone. Glitch Blizzard, M Cannon. Last members of Port Washington remaining. Kib is going to be on the plant. Spike it's going to be a 2v4 post plant for Port Washington. Glitch will be Last blinded. Player standing. Yasagi is going to get a 3k. M Cannon going to find Char on the roam. Going to find Kib as well. Blocking See if M Cannon can clutch vision. this one up for his team. It's two smokes up. Let's see if M Cannon can find the spike and defuse it. Is he gonna be able to? He's sneaking right by. 
Is he gonna be able to get the defuse? I'm not sure. No, he's not able to. Yasagi, a 4K. Wins round eight for Grafton. Just amazing. Play some stars in the astral plane. I amazing should. play we are seeing from this Grafton squad. As their perfect round differential might be over, but their perfect overall record might stay intact at this point. Right there. Like I said before, they just cannot let their foot off the gas pedal. They have to stay commanding here. Player's gonna get Yasagi this time. That's huge for Port Washington. Player gonna take some massive damage. He's gonna get healed up by the Sage. Hotshot gets one. Char is gonna get clear. Comes into contact with another member. Char gets two. It's a 4v2 in favor. Oh! 3v2 now in favor. Grafton. Enemy huh. positions aren't gonna be revealed. Kib's gonna be planting. Spike planted. Neely's is gonna find hot shot, get some. 2v2. Or Washington. Could swing around and win this. Glitched and Keneal are gonna be on top of each other, chasing the spike though. Keneal gonna go smoke fearlessly. He's gonna find Kib, he can't find Tombstone. And Tombstone gonna clutch it up for Grafton. Wow. I thought for sure Port Washington might have pulled it off. But Tombstone says no dice. Makes the remaining members of Port Washington into a Tombstone, if you will. Channeling his inner, inner Undertaker, resting them in peace. That's a good spot. Right, let's see how Grafton wants to attack this here. Looks like they're gonna go towards the B site. Let's see where Yasagi is gonna be here. So watch him pushing up Yasagi gets one. The one against position glitch blizzard gets one tombstone. Another here. nice snipe for him. Stone picks off M cannon. Spike down B. Cornelius is gonna get Kib. Glitch Blizzard. There's a down 2v2. Yasagi off of the board. Again, huge for Port Washington. Grafton circling back towards that A site. A smart play as Port Washington is unaware. They're on the complete opposite side of the map. 30 seconds left. Going through the main hallway. And now Tombstone gonna plant. Now Port Washington gets the message that Tombstone and Char are setting up shop in the A site. The memo has gone through, but are they gonna have enough time to get back to the A site? And pick off Tombstone and Char. As you can hear, Park is popping in the background. Julius does not see Tombstone. Tombstone gonna get both a 4K for him. Nine to one. Round 11 set to kick off. Tombstone and Yasagi yes, have just been a dynamic duo this for here. this Grafton team. Oh, this is a nice spot. That goes there. Yasagi cutting off the roaming and Tombstone just dominating from long range. We Almost like he's Steph Curry from three point range here. with that yes, sniper. Here. Sagi using that spin dash to his advantage gets one. Using the Phantom. 4v4 
four now. Kib is gonna get one. He's gonna plant immediately after that. Spike planted. Tombstone gonna hold down an angle. Nearly just going with a sniper of his own. Clear his inside smoke. Is so doesn't see Hotshot. Hotshot gets two Tombstone again with the sniper. Just going off. Last round before the switch. Last round before the switch. Drafting ten, Port Washington, only one on the board. That tells the story of this matchup. Is Grafton just dominating at the point of attack? Jet's ability, not able to get Camellius. Tombstone again, deadly with the sniper. See if he's able to pick off a member of Fort Washington. It's only a matter of time before it happens. He's gonna see Char up top clear, or clear, sorry. Strike down A. He was gonna get that snipe. He's tired of Tombstone being the only one capable of sniping. Only matter of time before the two bulls lock horns again. That being clear in Tombstone. It's a 5v3 in favor of Port Washington this time around. So the script has somewhat flipped. And Cannon is going to get shot down. Clear is still above. Clear! 30 seconds. Gonna win this fight. Oh, it clears not gonna win it. Tombstone's gonna win it. It's a 2v2. Hot shot's gonna be planting. Spike planted. This guy's gonna heal Cornelius. 3k for only hot shot. I have them. So holding on a line of sight with the sniper. He knows one is gonna push from Last the alleyway. Monkey to oh, a snipe from Tombstone. One v one situation. And Monkey Tail's clutched up. No, we cannot. Tombstone, three K for Grafton. And they win yet another round. Switching sides. If you are not doing well, keep trying. And Grafton will be on defense for at least two rounds. Give or take, they win the next two in order to win the matchup, and Port Washington will be on attack. Right here. Again, we've just been seeing all Grafton being shown here in the stream. They're showing why they're one of the most dominant teams in Division 2. And I believe this team can definitely hang with the likes of Fox Valley Lutheran. So Fox Valley needs to be on high alert here. Yasaki going in the spawn. Not going to work out for him this time. As M Cannon going to shut him down right away. And you can see Yasagi is basically the aggressor towards this team. Smoke is gonna come out. M Cannon's gonna be planting. Spike planted. He's gonna blast an explosive. But Washington, all they need to do is defend the bomb. Canelius gets one, Glitch gets one. Glitch is trying to get two more. Getting this cam out there. It's a 5v2 in favor. Port Washington. Last player standing. Give the last breath for Grafton. Looks like Port Washington's gonna win their second round. Kib's gonna try to go around, not gonna get one. Clear finishes it off a flawless round for Port Washington. As 
it's gonna take a lot more to get back into this one. Maybe the swap is just what poor Washington needed, but again, they need to be very, very, very resilient here if they want to come back into this one. It's it's not out of the realm of possibility, but it's going to be very difficult for the pirates to pull this off. Isagi's going to get stunned this time around, so no quick dash with Jet. Oh, he's actually going to go with the sniper this time around. This will be very interesting. He's trying to at least find one. He's not going to find any glitch. Good response. M Cannon takes out one of them. Char. Spike down B. He's going to claim both Monkey Tails and M Cannon. Keneally's going to shut him down. No 3v2 in favor. Spike planted. Gun here. And poor Washington. Last player standing. Keneally's is going to get kibbed down. Hot shot. Last member left for Grafton. Hotshot is just going to sit and wait this one out, I feel. Maybe get one pick. Doesn't know Cornelius is right behind him, though. Gun here. Looks like the timer is just going to expire here. Is Hotshot just teabagging in the corner right now? It's one way to bypass time. This timer is going to go out. <laughs> Port Washington is going to win round 14. It seems these strangers want me dead. So it, Grafton yeah, still needs two rounds to win, but Port Washington has won two straight here. And this may be where they get their momentum to start winning more rounds. As they're going to need about eight more to tie with Grafton. And like I said before, it's going to be very difficult. They have caught Grafton off guard, though, in the last two rounds, which is pretty huge, in my opinion. If you're able to take just, like, three rounds, for example, on this team, it's still very impressive, and it'll look it'll look good on your resume regardless. I mean, Port Washington is the team that's going to be... that is 3-1 right now, so if they drop down to 3-2, it's not really going to be too big of a deal, in my opinion, but, you know, if, if you're able to win rounds against good teams and learn from that and be able to translate it to, say, the playoffs, for example, if these two teams see each other again, then that'll work as M-Cannon gets a beautiful headshot on Tombstone. Soggy gonna shift away. Gonna be aggressive on the flank. Gets one. Gets two. Spike down B. Still a 3v2 in favor of Fort Washington. Hib's gonna find one, narrow it down to a 2v2, and this is dangerous for Fort Washington as Yasagi is still remaining. here. 2v1. All Yasagi has to do is see cool glitch, then he gets him. And a 3k for Yasagi. And Grafton needs just one more round win. Match point. Because oh, it is match point. They're desperate. And the attackers are going to call a timeout. First timeout I've seen called all season. Apparently the timeout is going to last a minute. So, recapping what we saw in round 15, we saw Grafton just go back to who they are, winning the flanks, and just winning their encounters in general with Port Washington. Narrowing it down to a situation where they were comfortable, keeping Yasagi on the board, that's the big thing for this Grafton team, is it, it kind of runs through Yasagi. He has been the main contributor of this team. Tombstone has been as well, but Yasagi right away with that ace within the first few couple rounds, that really just set the tone for this matchup. And if you're Port Washington, sure, this loss is going to sting, but you learn from it and you do better the next week against better teams. That's usually how it goes as the timeout is now ended and we are ready to Here. start round 16. Here. Here.
We're gonna see M Cannon have the spike. And it looks like Port Washington's gonna look to push the A site. Only Hotshot knew that they were over the wall. M Cannon picks them off. Char going down the alleyway towards the A site. Looks like Port Washington setting up shop in a position where they are favorable. Spike's gonna be planted. And the pressure is on. Clear is gonna get one. Isagi gonna get one. Gets two. Can't get three. Cornelius shuts him down. Cornelius remaining. finds a second. The last member is Tombstone. And Cornelius, a 3k, shuts down Grafton, and Grafton is gonna have to wait a little bit longer to win this one as Port Washington wins their fourth round, extending it to round 17. I tell you, even though the scoreboard of some of these matches is one-sided, it doesn't really tell the whole story because even if a match is like this 12-4, it's still going to be competitive. You're going to see both teams be competitive no matter what the score is. And that's what I like about with CA in general is the players just don't stop. Regardless of the score, they go hard and they go at it, which I respect fully. Which gets me excited to even cast a blowout game in the first place. Even though this one isn't really a blowout, but you know what I mean. And so it looks like Port Washington is going to try to push that A site again. As they say, consistency is key. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the mentality that Port Washington has right I now. I know exactly where you are. But they know Char is just sitting there with a shotgun. And Clear is going to pick him off. Cornelius is going to get another pick. M Cannon is going to be planting. Gib and Tombstone, the last member of them can going to be planting again. Spy cam Spike good dark's gonna go out. Glitched. More frost from the sage is gonna be on the battlefield. Tombstone trying to find a headshot. This is M Cannon gets the second chance rebound opportunity. Picking up the shotgun, using it to destroy the wall. Last player Tombstone standing. can't find another one. Keneally shuts it down. Cleans it up. And a 3k. Port Washington wins another round, extending it to round 18. Within 7. And they're just sneakily winning these rounds, Port Washington. I think they found a key to their solution of winning more rounds, but I'm not sure if it's... I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to come back. It might be too little too late, as again, Grafton only needs one more round to win. They are at match point right now. Port Washington has definitely proven that they can somewhat hang with Grafton as they won five rounds on this team, who came into this completely undefeated. It's Tombstone using Chamber's ability there. His sniper to get one of them down. And that'll set up Grafton nicely here. Right there. Nearly's gonna go up the raffle. Yasagi's gonna be there. Oh, he They're gets Yasagi! Wow. A huge kill. Tombstone's gonna find one. He can't find M Cannon. Clear's gonna get blinded. Or concussed, excuse me. M Cannon's gonna be planting. Which being a great Cover. distraction act for his team, the spike's gonna be planted a 3v3 situation. In effect for Grafton. Launching smoke! Kid's gonna launch some smoke down. Ah, Shot gonna go into the smoke, doesn't see, or he sees clear, doesn't win the exchange. Char gonna try to defuse. 
One enemy remaining. Kiv gets two. Get off my back. And only M Cannon is up. M Cannon not gonna get there. And Grafton Defenders wins. Win. Wow. What an ending. For Washington almost winning their sixth round. But Grafton comes out on top. 5-0 and on the season for Grafton. And their round differential is now 65-5, and I believe. Let me make sure that math is correct. Yep, 65-5 and will be Grafton's round differential after this game. But nonetheless, though, great performance by both teams. Proud of both of their performances, especially Yasagi on the side of Grafton. Average combat score of 392, KDA of 27, 13, and 0, Econ rating of 92, 3 first bloods. Yasagi is definitely the MVP alongside Tombstone. Combat score of 285, Econ rating of 135, KDA of 19, 9, and 1. That's crazy. Yasagi gets 2 kills, at least in this match, per death, which is insane to see. Well, with that. Matchup coming to a conclusion. The stream will now be coming to a conclusion, but the announcement I would like to make for JV Week 5 this Thursday, two new schools will be making their way onto the stream. Yes, two new schools. How exciting. Watertown versus Bayview will be the matchup. The Watertown Goslings versus the Bayview Redcats will be coming to you live on the Wasia stream this Thursday for JV Week 5. Very excited to cast the matchup. I'm hoping it's going to be as good as this one. Currently, Watertown is 4-0. The Red Cats are 3-0. They have a game scheduled, makeup game scheduled for tomorrow. That's their JV Week 4 match happening uh, Wednesday, tomorrow. And then they play Thursday against Watertown. So similar situation to what Port Washington was in coming into this game, except their makeup is going to be on the day before their, their uh, game this week. Nonetheless, though, I have been your fellow Wissia commentator, Andrew Schiff Jr., and I will see you back this Thursday for the Watertown Goslings versus the Baby Redcats. But for now, have a good night.